His arm traps me in the corner. I can feel his hot breath dusting my cheek. What is going through that little head of yours to think that was smart? I am not a very smart villain, sir. I guess we have to do things the hard way then. Oh no! Okay, so I went back and did not choose to do the suggestive Could you please cuddle with me, Ray? I'm unable to look him in the eye, and I hear him chuckle. I get up and get ready to go to sleep. I lay down in the bed, hyper aware of Ray's presence. But he stands looking out of the window. After a while of failed attempts to fall asleep, I look towards Ray. Ray? He glances at me. Hmm? Can you cuddle with me until I fall asleep? A small smile plays on his lips as he puts out his cigarette. Sure. He walks over, taking off his sweater. The bed dips and he drapes an arm around my waist. There was some comfort with Ray that I wasn't used to. With him, I felt safe. I think about the special I watched earlier in the day. Ray? Yeah? Was being with Steel Sheriff hard? Ray sucks his teeth in thought. It certainly wasn't easy. He wasn't a good person. Probably still isn't. We don't talk anymore. When was the last time you talked? Maybe six years ago or so. He was my guardian for about 11 years. Steel was a deeply troubled person that hurt people wherever he went. Ray looks at my worried expression. He ruffles my hair with a sympathetic smile. Don't worry, he couldn't hurt me. He tried to once and learned his lesson. Since that day, he lost interest in messing with me. Steel's the kind of trash that only punches down at people who won't fight back. The minute I turned 18, I left Steel for good. The NAHA was forced to figure out the PR spin for the situation. I think they landed on something like Binary Star paving his own path towards herodom, something like that. Did you have a hard time with Double Vision? I chew my lip and thought. Double wasn't always bad. He was very courteous to me most of the time. But things started to go bad, and then didn't stop snowballing. I think maybe he was manipulative and violent all along, but because it wasn't pointed at me... I refused to look, and other people got hurt because of that. I sigh, and Ray pulls me closer. He runs a hand through my hair, comfortingly. The way he was in the warehouse, it was never that bad. Before, I had an inclination that he was capable of killing me. Now, I know for sure that he is. It'll be okay, I promise. I will keep you safe. I glance up at Ray, who gives me a little smile. Why are you doing all of this, Ray? You have no obligation to spend all of your time watching over me. I'm thankful for your help, but I don't really understand your motives. Ray levels a look at me. A silence crosses over us as Ray studies my face. You don't have to say why if you're uncomfortable. Sorry. Ray places his hand on my cheek, pulling it softly so I face him. He looks at me, quietly, a softness pressing through his eyes. Espoir. Hmm? I love you. <gasps> I'm in love with you, Espoir. From the first moment I saw you, I fell for you. Every interaction with you after that only served to further solidify my love for you. I wanted to make you love me too. Ray gives a self-deprecating laugh. But I suppose I'm no good at making people love me without a PR team. My mouth hangs open, face heating up at the bold confession. Mm. You don't have to respond. I'm not looking for affirmation. I just thought you should know the significance I hold you in. If I lose you, I might as well lose everything. If you're gone... The world will crumble. That's kinda dramatic. I won't apologize for how I feel. I gaze up at Ray. It feels somewhat surreal that Ray, Binary Star, just 
confessed his love for me. I continue to stare, and his face starts to blush, and he looks away. What is it? Nothing. You really love me? Don't repeat it while staring at me like that. He's embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. Oh yeah, because you can read my thoughts. You are so insufferable. I laugh, and Ray's expression softens up. He touches my face again, looming ever closer. You are so unbelievably perfect. Espoir. Can I kiss you? My heart leaps out of my chest, Ray's face so close to mine I could almost feel the heat rolling off his skin. I'm definitely gonna say yes, but I want to see if I, what happens if I say no. I shake my head, lightly. Sorry, I don't think I can. It's okay. Don't apologize. I'm sorry for even asking. I got ahead of myself, clearly. You should try and get some sleep. You look exhausted. I look exhausted? Ray, you look like you haven't slept in weeks. I don't really get much sleep. Do you think you can sleep in with me tomorrow? Ray gives a little smile. We'll see. Try to get some sleep, Star. You too, Ray. I cuddle into him, and his arms tighten around me. With the comfort of Ray's tight hold, I fall asleep in no time. Okay, now give me them lips. Give me that smooch, sir. I don't know if that changes anything, because he seemed pretty chill about not being kissed, but, uh... I nod, slowly, and Ray's hand moves to the base of my head. He leans in, softly, pushing his lips onto mine. His fingers weave into my hair, and I can feel him sigh. When I don't pull back, Ray deepens the kiss. My heart is hammering in my chest. I become greedy at the sensation of Ray's lips gently colliding into my own. I want to taste him. My fingers reach up, wrapping into the collar of Ray's shirt, and pull him closer. His hand tightens in my hair in response to my action. I push my tongue against his lips, and he parts his, brushing his tongue against my own. He groans and pulls back, a small smile forming on his lips. I look up at him, hungry. We should probably stop. Or I'll have a harder time stopping myself later on. His black eyes are filled with warning. Okay, fine. Good. Thank you. He leans down, placing a kiss on my forehead. I wake up as something tickles my cheek. My eyes readjust, and I glance over. Ray snoozes near me, soundly. I try to get up, but his arms are wrapped tightly around my waist. He mumbles something, and nuzzles the top of my head. Ray! Mm, five more minutes. Ray! His eyes flutter open. When he realizes his hold on me, his face goes pink and he scrambles up. Ah, sorry. I didn't mean to. I usually don't... It's okay. You were pretty out of it there. That's probably the best sleep he's ever had in his life. Ray stretches, his toned body brushing against the thin black shirt. Yeah, I honestly haven't slept that soundly in ages. I'm surprised I even woke up. That makes two of us. Ray gets out of bed, yawning. Do you mind if I take a shower? No, not at all. Uh, now that we know about that whole military illegal thing that uh, our friend here may or may not have done, he says something kind of interesting when you when you make the choice. See you acting like a psycho murderer? Like murdering a bunch of guys with your laser vision? You slaughtered those people as if they were... As if they were... I stopped talking, because I wasn't sure if I trusted my stomach. There's an awkward silence before Ray sighs. Yeah, that's fair. I was scared for you, angry, and I kinda lost it. Totally lost it. Yeah, totally lost it. I thought heroes weren't allowed to kill. Ray's lips form a tight line. Do you think crime would go away if we weren't? Do you think heroes are all allowed to decide if they want this job? Espoir. Heroes are glorified military weapons. At the end of the day, 
We're just the police, but with shiny new packaging and horrifying abilities. If the government doesn't make us work for them, these abilities can end up being a fast pass to anarchy or terrorism. So then I guess we perform war crimes and terrorism under the name of the government instead. Ray laughs, but it's empty and hollow. His eyes are so emotionless. I'm unable to say anything back. I never had much faith in heroes, but reality is even more horrifying than what I thought. So you aren't going to get arrested for the... the... the slaughter? No, there's already a cleanup team there dealing with it. As far as everyone else is concerned, those criminals disappeared without a trace. The clear disgust showed on my face, and Ray grimaced. This is the reality of things, Espoir. I'm not saying it's good, but it's the reality. I may have lost my cool, I admit that. But if you heard what they wanted to do with you and their thoughts, you would feel the same way I did. Oh yeah, he can he can do that, he can hear that, ooh. I open my mouth to reply, but I'm cut off by a dull pain on my jaw. Oh, some things different happen if, if you don't fully trust a uh, binary star. I wake up with the sense that I dreamt about the old times with Double. He used to be so much nicer. Or was he like this all along and I just didn't catch it? I can hear Ray give a tired sigh as the shower water hits his body. Having Binary Star in my small apartment, honestly, it scares me. Back when I was part of the night crew, some of my criminal compatriots would come back to the base, absolutely terrified. They would shake as if withstanding an arctic freeze. They would be unable to speak, their eyes hollowed and distant. And the next day, they would be gone. Hmm. I wouldn't dare ask Double what happened to them. His white knuckles said more than his voice ever could. Now I think I understood. The sickening sounds wouldn't stop coming back to me. It made my stomach flip and my legs shake. But despite my numbing fear, I had to know. Who are you, Binary Star? Okay, we looked at his notebook, so what's on his phone? I tap on one of his phones in the duffel bag. It's password protected, but I can read a couple of the newest text messages. None of the texts come from saved numbers. I expand the first message. Hey, BS, this is Mist. I got your number from Chandra. I texted you last week, but you never responded. Can you please consider talking to Herschel for me? The second message comes from the same number. Look, I know I fluffed up. It won't happen again. The family took the shut-up buddy and signed an NDA, so if you vouch for me, I promise it won't come back to bite you. Hmm. While I was reading the second message from this missed person, a new message appeared onto the screen. Need to talk about your recent performance. I've been informed of actions inappropriate by the standards of the NAHA. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Herschel. Uh-oh, Herschel seems like a big deal. While trying to close out, I accidentally hit the reply button on the message from Herschel. I should have just closed out immediately, but part of me wanted to see what would happen if I respond. Uh, I'd like to end on- I should respond, because that's what I would want to do. But, uh, respond with something flirty. <laughs> I snicker to myself, typing up a response. I'll show you some real inappropriate actions by the standards of the NAHA. Wink. A response comes almost immediately. If that's a threat, we will not respond lightly, Herschel. <laughs> My attempt at flirtation has flown far over Herschel's head and into dangerous territory. I guess Herschel doesn't like jokes. I become determined. And I won't respond lightly to that sexy little body of yours, Herschel. I cover my mouth to keep myself from laughing out loud as the typing indicator begins and stops multiple times. <laughs> Herschel must really be confused. Finally, a text comes through. Did you drink drain? <laughs> Did you drink drain cleaner? Take a gunshot to the head? Sober up. 8 a.m. tomorrow. Herschel. Herschel was certified no fun at all. I put Ray's phone away. 
going through my phone, huh? You're a nosy little thing. Kinda an invasion of privacy, don't you think? Ray cracks a smile. By the way, I don't appreciate you role-playing as me and flirting with my boss. I am not going to hear the end of that. Sorry, it was funny in the moment. You can just say it was my mistake or something. Ray's face falls. Absolutely not. It's better for both of us if they don't know you exist. Okay, what if I respond with no? I type and send a simple no. It only takes a few moments for this person named Herschel to respond. Don't play this game, Ray. We will not respond lightly, Herschel. Suddenly, another text comes in with a long set of numbers. What the? The realization hits me. Herschel has sent me coordinates. I don't even waste time verifying that they're my coordinates before responding back. Sorry, it was a joke, of course, I'll be there. <laughs> Smiley. Herschel takes a few seconds to respond. 8 a.m. Tomorrow. Okay. Uh, what if I say, yes? I quickly type something simple. The person named Herschel responds back with a thumbs up emoji. <laughs> something gave me the feeling that this man, Herschel, wasn't necessarily technologically literate. <laughs> no, no, I shouldn't respond. That would that would be rude. I closed out of the text, deciding it wasn't worth it to respond. Ray might find out and get upset. I put the phone away. Oh yeah, I didn't ask him, how did you get your abilities? I recall what Luke, Blaze, told me a couple days ago. Ask Ray how he got his abilities. I look up at Ray, and he looks back down with a slightly stressed expression on his face. He knows what I've thought. Tell me, Ray. His lips tighten, and he works a hand through his hair. You can already hear what I'm about to say. His body is tense, and he glances back at me. Ray, you said anything. I know. Ray. Fluff. He curses under his breath. I narrow my eyes. What's your ability, Ray? He looks at me directly. His eyes so deeply black, they might just swallow me whole. Why did the music stop? Even the room feels a bit dimmer due to his presence. They call me Binary Star. Why? Because you shine so brightly against the evil of night? Ray lets out a sound somewhere between a scoff and a laugh. If only that were the case, Star. What are binary stars? Um, hold on a second. Hold on a second, let me just Google that really quickly. Well, that doesn't seem so bad. Is that bad? Is, is that something to be wary of? Is this a science lesson or something? Ray stares down at me with an immovable expression. He's clearly not in the mood for jokes. A solar system where there are two stars? In a binary system, there is a primary star and a secondary star. Depending on their orbit, they can be classified as wide binaries or close binaries. I'm unsure where this is going, but the tone of Ray's voice keeps me from speaking. In a closed binary, mass can be transferred between the two. The primary star can exert gravitational force strong enough to pull in the smaller star, cannibalizing it completely. Uh-oh. I hope this ain't going where I think it's going. A silence settles between the two of us, an understanding that leaves me queasy. I am said to be the hero with countless abilities, but in reality, my ability is just one. To pull in smaller stars, and devour them whole. <coughs> Every ability I have, I killed for. Criminals, villains, civilians, even other heroes. Some were forced upon me. Others were of my own volition. My stomach sinks. It's not out of the question that he would be able to slaughter people so easily. After all, I witnessed it myself. Wait, um... So, uh... What happened to your parents again? But some part of me felt... Disturbed. I won't deny what I am, Espoir. Luke was right. I am a monster. I'm not a hero from the stars. I'm essentially only one thing. A 
government-funded military weapon. He's like a hero manufactured to be used against other heroes. Ooh. Nothing can change that. Despite Ray's stony facade, I can sense some sadness in his tone. I may be a monster, but I promise I will keep you safe if you let me. I'm not sure how to respond. Some part of me knows thank you isn't an appropriate response for this situation. Ray can sense the conflicting expressions that drift across my face. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, so, last time we searched for some more information about Binary Star. Why don't we call Haley? Haley, are you okay? Haley. I decide to give Haley a call. They warned me before that Binary Star most likely had some skeletons in the closet. Maybe they know more. Or maybe they don't. But either way, Hal's comforting voice is something that I need to hear right now. The dial tone rings softly. Hello? Espoir? Hi, Hal. Espoir, are you okay? I tried texting you, but you never responded. I was getting worried. You kind of dropped off the face of the planet there for a minute. I was worried about you, too. I'm okay. You sure? You don't sound okay. I bit my lip. Everything in me wants to run, crying to Hal, but I can't be selfish. Hal essentially just lost their whole business with the chaos in the West District. Oh yeah. The last thing I want to do is heft more stress upon them. Yeah, I guess. I just miss you is all. I can hear Hal suck in air suddenly. Uh, Hal? Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, me too. Uh, are you okay? I hear a familiar voice in the background. Yo, is that Espoir? Let me say hi. Wait. Your face is so red. <laughs> That's so funny. Stone cold how down bad. Okay, good, they're together. A large smack sound reverberates over the speaker. Miles groans in the background. So, did you call for anything specific? Well, to make sure you're alive is one thing. Not really. Remember how you mentioned that you think all heroes have skeletons in their closets? Mm-hmm. The more powerful the hero, the more packed that closet's gonna be. Why do you think that? Hmm. If I have unlimited power, we'll stop you. The government will do anything to protect their assets, after all. What do you think about Binary Star? Once again, there's a silence on the other end of the call. Please, Espoir, listen to me closely. Run away from Binary Star. I did some asking, some digging, and... Nothing good can come from being around him. It will only cause you misery and chaos. You'll never know peace again if you accept him. The best thing you can do is run as far and fast as you can. There's another pause on the other line. I have to go. Just please, tell me you will leave tonight and run very, very far away. I was unable to answer, unsure of what to do. Haley's tone left no question of severity of their request. I'll find you again when you're in a safe place. The phone call cuts off suddenly. Haley probably hung up. Ooh, that's not promising. Okay. Okay, what if I call double? Can I even call double? <laughs> His face appears in my mind. I hate him with burning passion, but I can't ignore that he's my best bet for information on the moment. I unblock his number, and then press the dial button. The phone rings, and rings, but ultimately, Double does not answer. I sigh and stretch out. Suddenly, my phone is vibrating. I pick up the call. <laughs> and what do I owe this pleasure, Espoir? His voice is as smug as usual. I can practically see the mocking grin across his face. Double. Don't act so cold. You're the one that called me. Well, you're the one that tried to cut my fluffing fingers off. I still might, if you keep pushing. I ignore him, determined to sticking to my goal at hand. I have a question. Mmm? That right? Yeah. I remember back when we... worked together. You had some run-ins with Binary Star, right? Hmm. Double. 
I'll answer your question if you answer mine first. Okay. What color underwear are you wearing right now, Raven Guard? Black, but shut up. <laughs> Double laughs. What a piece of manure. I should have known he was just going to mess with me. I am not answering that. So let me get this right. His voice becomes dangerously low. You call me to get some info on another guy, and you assume I'm just going to play nice? Yeah. Double lets out a harsh laugh. You are truly more of an idiot than I could have ever imagined. Shut up! I resist the urge to throw my phone across the room. The line is silent. Guess I should hang up then. What makes you think I'm wearing any? Mm, uh, black. Black. Oh, very sexy. A classic. I miss seeing you in only a black little thing. Just thinking about it has me a little excited. But it's too bad. I don't believe you. What? I said, I don't believe you. I can hear the smirk in his tone. Send me a picture. Are you serious? I am not doing that. Oh, all bark and no bite, per usual, huh? I guess you don't need me to answer your question, then. I immediately get up, stripping off my top and pants. I'll show you some bite, butthead. After posing for a flawless butt shot, paired with a tasteful middle finger, <laughs> I send over the photo. Very nice. Almost exactly like I remember. Pretty ho. You shut up! I am not. If anyone's a hoe around here, it's you, my good man. Double. Hmm? So what did you want to know again? Ah, right. Binary star. Double gives a short, spiteful laugh. You're so lucky you were my partner. You have no idea what I sheltered you from. You still don't. The others would come back completely traumatized from seeing their friends being ripped apart by the heroes, while you knew none the better. None of the heroes ever gave a crap about any of us, and that guy, he was the worst of all. There was nothing human about those red eyes. No empathy, no guilt, just destruction without mercy. In our world, they say if you see a red flash, you're already dead. The iconic red eyes of national hero binary star being plastered on every TV show, every magazine has to be some kind of irony. Is that what you wanted to hear about your new boyfriend? The child from the stars? Is he really that bad? Binary star is so far removed from humanity, he might as well be from the stars. He's a creature without weaknesses. Well, I guess now he has one. And God knows he's gonna keep that- Hey! Don't you talk about Binary Star's dog like that! That's very rude! On a short leash. Oh, yeah, I guess that means he's gonna probably lock me up and- You shut up! You shut up, Double! Good luck! Inappropriate name for a female dog. You're gonna need it. I'll keep your nice little picture as a parting gift. After that, the phone goes silent. Did Double really just hang up on me? Still a scumbag, after all this time. Well, shoot, my, my apartment's on fire. Oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Then I ran out, I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. Go for the front door, don't grab no shoes or nothing. I make a desperate crawling dash for the front door. Adrenaline shields me from the pain searing through my palms. The door is closed. I curse, reaching for it desperately. The metal handle sears my fingers, peeling the skin directly off, melting it to the doorknob. Ow. E. I scream in pain, body shaking. I look away from my hand, concerned that if I glance at it for even a second, bile will rise from my stomach. I shuffle back to the bed, desperately grabbing and yanking a sheet off. My lungs burn and scream from the hurried action, desperate for any semblance of clean air. I crawl desperately, my vision spotting black, brain hazy from the lack of oxygen. I fight against it as hard as I possibly can, crawling forward, the door feeling miles away. Ooh. 
My body collapses, unable to take any more. Before my vision fades completely, I see light from the doorway. Hmm. Eh. Eh. Okay, what about the window? <laughs> I look around. The front door is too far away, and the balcony door might be too heavy for me to open. The window falls into my vision. It's already partially open. If I can leverage my body to force it open in one swoop, maybe I can get some fresh air and jump to my neighbor's balcony. It's a risky maneuver, but I'm willing to try. I crawl towards the window. Gathering my strength, I push the window sill upwards, careful not to fall out. Black spots cloud my vision. Instead of fresh air coming through the opening, it seems only smoke is going out. Ooh. I need to hurry. I crawl up towards the window, my lungs scream at the lack of air. I slowly and carefully make my way out of the window. I stand up, trying to get a foothold on the thin awning. I've done this a thousand times before in my previous... career. But none under such difficult circumstances. Oh dear. My mind feels hazy, and my knees begin to shake. I look towards the neighbor's balcony. I have to do this quickly. I have to make my leap. In all but a moment, I'm soaring through the air. I am a bit short. I grab desperately to the bottom of the balcony. I try to steady my hanging body, my arms shaking with the force. If I can just get my elbows up, I can pull the rest of my body to safety. My heart pounds as I hang onto the neighbor's balcony desperately. My lungs are screaming at the rush of fresh air as my vision obscures. My fingertips shake. The sweat making it all the more dangerous as my fingers begin to slip. I try to pull myself up, but between my shaking, overextended arms, lungs filled with smoke, and slippery fingertips, I can't seem to hold on. My body plummets five stories towards the ground. I close my eyes, waiting for the collision. Suddenly, my body is slammed into the water. My fall is somewhat broken by the shadow fountain below. The air is violently stolen from my lungs, and I can feel my spine and legs shattered in multiple places. Ouch! I try to move, try to get up, but my body won't listen. It screams in protest. My vision obscures as my lungs still can't find purchase in any fresh air. Please, God. This is a horrible way to go! I cry only to myself as my vision fades fully to black. Well, I don't think I'm walking away from that one. Okay, so in this playthrough, I haven't been really nice to BS, so what happens if I go to the balcony and don't call him? I make my way towards the balcony door. It's the closest to me, so it only takes a few seconds to get to. When I reach out to the doorknob, I can feel the heat even before touching it. I turn around, yanking a sheet off the bed, and wrap my hand in it. I try to push, but the balcony door doesn't budge. Was it already open? The last- is it closed now? Oh... I curse under my breath. Wasn't it open? Wasn't it open before? Why does it have to be jammed, now of all times? I use my full body weight to push against it, but again, no dice. My vision begins to spot as my lungs desperately search for any air they can gain purchase in. Oh no! I again press my body weight against the door, but it doesn't even flinch under my full pressure. My legs collapse, shaking as my vision swirls. I reach towards the door, crawling on my knees. My body heaves and coughs, unable to relieve my lungs from the soot. Oh! As my vision begins to fade, suddenly a rush of fresh air hits me. Oh! I'm disappointed in you. Binary Star looks down at me, radiant as ever. Even in these circumstances, he glows. You would really rather die than ask me to save you. Do you hate me? Are you disgusted by what you found out about me? Do you think I'm a monster too? I'm unable to answer, 
all of my words being swallowed by coughs and desperate greedy gasps for the sudden influx of fresh air. You don't have to say anything. I already know you do. Binary Star smiles, kindly. His words don't match his expression. I debated leaving you here, watching the life fade from your eyes, unshackling myself from humanity once and for all. But it seems I'm really struggling with that decision. So, I'll give you a chance to make that decision for me. He approaches, smiling as kind as ever. I struggle to my feet to meet the hero eye to eye. Why? I choked out between coughs. To be frank, I'm tired of being a paragon for humanity. It's clear that now even you don't see me as a hero either. You probably don't even see me as a human. Not one ounce of affection left in your heart for me. And you're even right to think so, to do so. And I want to retire, I guess. He pauses in thought. Well, I guess retire may not be the correct word for it. He chuckles. What you experienced earlier with the alien attack was just a recon of sorts. They have many armies waiting for the world to attack. It would happen in a week or so. They'll have ships, bodies, and weapons beyond our comprehension. The other heroes will only serve as a special fodder for ungodly mechanisms. I could defeat them. It won't be pretty, but I could. He brushes a hand through his hair. But you see, Espoir, I'm having a hard time finding the will to fight for humanity. To save them. And the only thing that would make me even remotely want to. He glances downward at me, but his silence falls thick. To be honest, at this point, I'd rather just watch it all burn. Let the aliens do the hard work, and then I'll play cleanup crew. But you're a hero. Yeah, I don't think he cares. I really don't think he cares. <laughs> <laughs> Binary Star looks at me in genuine surprise, and laughs. Espoir, if you weren't so cute, I'd feel bad for you. This is me. For so long, I imagined and marveled over what worlds I could be from. A child from the stars, they called me. Imagine my disappointment that all along the star that birthed me was this planet, Earth to a mother that would rather sell me off as a government project than miss a hit of fentanyl. Earth was my star. A sullied, faded star. Infected. He levels a look at me. His eyes look like eternity. When I'm the only being sitting upon this rotting star? Amongst the trees, wind, and silent northern lights? Then, maybe I can finally exhale. He smiles peacefully. Some part of me thought you could save me. He chuckles in a self-deprecating way. I realize I was wrong to even place that expectation on you. I am sorry for that, Espoir. The binary star hero sheds his mask. He is Ray. Despite it all, they are one in the same. He reaches his hand out towards me. Ray is shining brighter than ever lighting up the whole room with his divine glow. Some stars, Some stars are created by being ripped, ripped apart by black holes. holes. Espoir, Espoir, do you want do to be want torn to apart? apart? Shredded, Shredded piece by piece, 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 to be born a whole, more, more bright, bright and beautiful than ever before? before? Some part of me felt it wasn't necessarily a question he was posing. Uh, 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 what, what if, what if, what if I move away. I don't think that's going to end very well, but what, what if I say nah, sir? I take a step back. Fear takes a hold as tears cloud my vision. Ray, please, don't. Ray looks hurt. After all of this, you still run from me? Binary Star's face falls. The glow snuffs out like a candle. Flames fade to nothing in an instant. I'm surrounded by darkness, and I'm terrified. My flight instincts trigger, and I sprint towards the door. 
I reach for the door, desperate. I crash full force into something soft. Ugh. Really, Espoir? Thought you Thought knew better you than that by now. now. Running from someone, someone like me? Like his arm traps me in the corner. I can feel his hot breath dusting my cheek. What is going, going through, through that, that little head of yours to think that was smart? smart? I am not a very smart villain, sir. I guess we have to do things the hard way, then. Oh no! In the dark, a vicious red glow begins to shine. Binary Star smiles. He smiles the same way I've seen a thousand times, among every billboard, poster, and magazine. Goodbye, Goodbye Espoir. Don't... Don't beam me, bro! I got beamed. A flash of red. A surge of pain. Everything goes black. And then... Nothing. True to his word, Binary Star carried forth with his plan. Within a week, an awful war broke out due to the alien invasion. Within a month, all humanity ceased to exist. Wow. That's a pretty bad end right there. I don't think anybody's happy with that ending. Within three months, all living creatures were torn asunder. Bodies strewn among trees, stones, and grass, as if they were innate to the terrain. Within a year, Binary Star had grown tired, lonely. He roamed and mourned, still unable to answer the question that pressed in him, demanding a conclusion. With a last exhale, Binary Star fulfilled the final purpose he was created for, with the first gift he was ever given. He shined so bright, all of nature was forced to bow before him. And so, for the first time, amongst the deafening silence of galaxy dust, Ray finally existed, completely alone. Cool boy! Okay! Brutal! <laughs> can can that go any differently? Okay, instead of saying, but you're a hero, what if I go, that's kind of messed up, dude. Humanity is cruel. Despite it all, despite the glamour, the advertisements, the campaigns, I am human. He looks at my scared, doubtful form. I know to you, to some, I probably look like a monster. And believe me when I say, I desperately tried to shelter you from that. To everyone else, I look like a savior. But frankly, I'm tired of wrestling with strangers' views and expectations of myself. My identity. I can't stop. I am inexorable. Only when I see the earth shatter under my force will I be forced to mourn the loss. Yeah, yeah, you'll mourn all right when there's absolutely nothing. Only as the planet scatters and drifts as a trillion glowing particles will I have to reckon with the conclusion of if I'm a human or monster. Alright. Alright. Moving away from you doesn't seem to be a very good thing. So so why don't I give in to that? It doesn't it, it doesn't it doesn't seem like everyone's gonna have a good time if I don't take your hand, so I will take Ray's hand. I take Ray's hand, my heart thumps out of my chest. He smiles beautifully full of cathartic hurt. I understood in that moment that I am the bone that needs to be broken in order to be set in place and heal properly. The day I met you was the first day I learned something new about myself. I learned that I could love, that I could hope to be human. Ray holds me close, his hand strokes my cheek. Thank you for letting me dream, Espoir. Am I not getting out of this alive. I thought I, thought could, I could change, change. That, I could that I could be something, something other than, than human, human or monster. monster. But, but in, in the, the end, end... Mm. But in the, the end, end, I have a quasar, have a quasar that shines around me like a halo. It pulls, it pulls matter, matter from everything else, else around it into a single, single volatile, volatile ring. ring. That ring, ring will shred, shred and, swallow and swallow until it's had its fill. fill. Until nothing until else can be cannibalized. 
It'll rage on and on until it fades away from existence completely. He brushes some soot off my forehead. He pauses, looking upon my face. A moment of hesitation clouds his features. Famous last words! I hope you find what you're looking for. Ray looks upon my face with an indecipherable smile and a sigh. There's a sadness that lurks in his dark eyes. He brushes a tear away from my cheek. Don't cry, Espoir. I'll keep, I'll keep you, you with you me forever. forever. Ray takes my face into his hands. In a moment that both felt shorter than a second and longer than an eternity, Ray presses his face to mine. His lips passionately gain purchase among my own. I push back, desperately trying to convey what words cannot. At that moment, I feel the sun. Everything radiates. My heart beats. My skin hums. I feel metamorphosis. I look at Ray. He shines. Parts of me fade, being pulled apart and shredded into dust by the star before me. Ray holds me in his arms. He kisses me desperately between sweet murmured words. I can taste the wet salt that runs down his cheeks and falls between our lips. He holds me tighter, wrapped in my own cocoon. I can no longer talk. I can no longer see. Soon my mind is no longer my own. I shine with Ray, brilliance spread amongst matter and being. I fade. I am reborn. Cool! Sick! Epic! Dang it! I didn't get all the pictures! Ah! I didn't realize there was a walkthrough. I didn't realize that you can get an ending with Hal and Double Vision. So I'm gonna do that right now. Some part of me knew that leaving Haley was going to be one of the hardest things I will have to do. Despite our short time together, Haley and I have become incredibly close. When I first got hired, I was scared to form any friendships. Like a stray backed into the corner, I stayed away and hissed at anyone who came too close. I was a very spicy kitty. But Haley gave me my space. They supported me with words of encouragement. They let me lean on them until I was able to grow a backbone of my own. I've changed a lot thanks to Haley's patience and kindness. I'm sure Double was even able to sense the change in me, considering how on edge he is. I can't risk Double doing something to Haley, so I can't stay. I decided to put to use the backbone that Haley gave me. They helped and protected me at my lowest. Now, I will protect them. But even so, it's heart-wrenching to lose someone who just understood on the level Haley does. And I won't fool myself to say I didn't feel anything for them, either. Haley. Their expression stings me to my core. I didn't want to leave them, either. But I hardly had a choice in any of this. Frankly, since meeting Double, I hardly had a choice in anything. I glanced down at the envelope holding it up. I'm sorry to do this. I'm just going to really miss you. I thought maybe we had something. In this playthrough, we did, Hail A. I picked all the choices that you like. Haley suddenly becomes flustered, their face turning a light pink, and they face away. Ah, uh, crap. Never mind. Can't believe I'm really making this more awkward than it already is. Ugh, sorry. I can't help but to smile a bit. I thought it was only me that felt something. Maybe if I stuck around longer, Hells and I could have started dating or something. I felt even more depressed at the thought of having to leave the city now. This sucks. I force a smile, unsure of what to say. Sorry, I'm just being selfish. Do what's best for you, Espoir. Just know you aren't getting rid of me that easily. I can't help but smile. I never wanted to get rid of you, Hals. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe someday when whenever you're running from is over, you can come back. 
How do you know I'm running from something? I've looked in a mirror before, Espoir. Okay, my house is on fire. Oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Ain't gonna grab no shoes or nothing, but I'm gonna go for the window. The window falls into my vision. It's already partially open. Gathering my strength, I push the window sill upwards. The momentum of the push causes me to fall backwards onto the hard floor. Oh no! I curse to myself, frustration growing. Chirp, chirp, squeak? Chirp, chirp, squeak? Huh? I look up and see a... Bat? In the window? Batman? Why is Bat? My heart drops. I need to shoo it away from the fire, immediately. I try to leap up, but I slip back onto the hard ground. Chirp, squeak, chirp! Is the... Oh! The bat begins to morph, to change shape. Is the bat Haley? Haley, you're a bat! That's kind of cool. Am I hallucinating? I rub my eyes. The morphing of the bat continues. The bat begins to take a more human shape, fur shedding into skin, wings into arms. Am... am I dead? No, but if we don't get out of here, you might very well be soon. The bat has formed into a very familiar figure. My goodness, Haley! They sit across my window frame, cool and composed, despite the chaos surrounding us. Their green hair sways in the wind. Despite the very cool bat ears, a very familiar sparkle in their eyes make it impossible not to recognize them. How? Haley smiles. They sport a cat suit and a mask. A suit like that isn't cheap. It looks even custom made. And was Haley just a bat? Espoir, are you okay? Why? Why are you? What are you? It's dangerous, you have to... My, bra <laughs> My brain malfunctions, and Haley laughs. I think the smoke is getting to your head. Let me get you out of here, and then I promise I'll explain everything. No, I, I sure hope you will. Haley hops through my window. They make their way over to the balcony door. I hope Ray isn't gonna come in here all so cool! Ah, You probably look cooler than I did as, as a villain. Cover your face. I do as I'm told, and in one smooth kick, Haley shatters the glass. God! You're so cool! Sugoi desu! Okay, now I know your brain has lost too much oxygen. Haley plucks me off of the ground and stands me to my feet. Haley begins to morph again. Oh! Soon, a large Siberian tiger is in my apartment. A giant kitty. Wait, what? Miss? Were you that kitten? Were you that kitten that came into my room? Because I just remembered the kitten was vaguely green, and this cat is green, and they had kind of the same eyes. Did you sneak into my house as an adorable kitten? Get on, Get my, on my back. back. The tiger talks in Haley's voice. I'm going to get you, get out, you of out of here. here. The tiger is Haley. I approach it cautiously. Oh my, oh my god, god, hurry, hurry up. up! You know, fire behind you? The tiger, Haley, scoops me up with their head onto their back. They walk onto the balcony and back up to the very edge. Hang on, Hang on as tight, as, tight as, you as you can, can okay? okay? I wrap my arms around Haley and shut my eyes, putting my full faith into Hal. Is is Ray Binary Star gonna be looking back and be like, is is that a fluffing tiger? What? You mean I set my girlfriend's apartment on fire for nothing? Cause I know he did. Haley takes off into a sprint. Soon the air hits my face and we land again. I look up and see that we're on the neighbor's balcony. One more, One more time. time. Hang, on, Hang on, okay? okay. There's another sprint and then leap. A loud metal sound resonates as we land onto the fire escape. Haley doesn't stop moving. They continue to sprint down the stairs, never breaking stride. 
When they hit the soil, their gait only speeds up. Ooh. I look up, and even the night sky is a blur. Keep holding on until I tell you to stop, okay? I can hear Haley huff below me. I can't help but to think how soft their fur feels under my face. After some time, Haley finally slows to a stop, placing me onto the ground. Oh my god, what are you doing? I told you to keep the car running! Haley roars ferociously at a certain miles, who is standing outside beside a car. And just like that, I started living a new life with Miles and Haley in a new city. Apparently, Haley has been living a double life as an infamous villain this whole time. <laughs> well, villain isn't necessarily the correct term. Cat burglar is probably more appropriate. When I used to be a villain, Haley's alias was plastered all over magazines. Shrouded villain Chimera strikes again. But Hal never hurt anyone, always worked alone. The only reason they were labeled a villain was due to the fact that they were taking from the rich and powerful. And were dang good at it. So good, in fact, that Miles' dad hunted Haley down and offered an incredible amount of money for Haley to take on Miles as their villain apprentice. Ah! I like this ending. <laughs> oh, and did I mention that apparently Miles comes from a long infamous line of villainy? <laughs> <laughs> His dad, brothers, uncles, aunts, mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers, and so on, are some of the most well-known villains of all time. Miles, of course, would rather be a hero, but good luck to anyone who tries to convince his father of that. So now, Miles, Haley, and I roll together. Sharing a small apartment, we sleep in the day and we lurk in the night. We take what isn't ours, we funnel the money into offshore accounts, preparing to flee whenever he finds us. Because according to Haley, it's not a matter of how, it's a matter of when. Having Haley at my side, I feel like I could take on anything. I would take on anything at the chance for a future where I could keep smiling and laughing with them. With Haley at my side, things are happier, peaceful even. I found my stride again. I didn't know how much I needed them. They look at me. A familiar smile adorns their beautiful face. Falling asleep by Hal's side is a piece of heaven that I'm willing to fight for, to preserve, be it heroes or villains. Come what may, I'm ready. Oh, that's lovely. That's absolutely lovely. That's a nice ending. I would like that to be the canon ending. We just keep running from BS here. Oh, so now I gotta ruin it by getting an ending with double vision. Ooh. So trying to get double's ending, he gives me a little bit more information. And it seems that double likes all the choices where you're really mean to him and, and you curse at him and you're really defiant. What's wrong with you, my dude? The others told me I was too soft on you. Too sweet on you. Fluff. Something foreign tints Double's tone, an uncharacteristic hint of emotion breaking through. Aw, oh, are you liking me because I'm all defiant and stuff? Espoir, you should think hard and make a decision. Do you want to live at the whims of a cruel, unforgiving creature? Or would you rather die? Your window to make a decision is closing. Soon, it'll be made for you. Hmm... <laughs> Even if you cry and beg, I can't come and save you this time, Ravenguard. Binary star is so far removed from humanity, he might as well be from the stars. I try to push his words out of my head. Do you want to live at the whims of a cruel, unforgiving creature, or would you rather die? Binary... No, Ray surely can't be that bad. He's been nothing but kind to me. Double has told me cruel lies in the past, He's definitely just trying to psych me out. I don't know. Okay, don't grab no shoes or nothing. Go for the front door. I make a desperate crawling dash for the front door. Adrenaline shields me from the pain searing through my palms. I crawl towards the front door. It's open. Oh, it's open this time. I can escape. I thanked whatever gods may have been watching over me. Crawling out into the hallway, I was able to get some more fresh air. With adrenaline kicked in, 
I was up on my feet and running in no time. I sprint down the stairs and out of the front door. My lungs burnt as if they had caught fire as well. Ooh. Making my way to the street, I can't help but to find the silence... odd. A fire this big? And there were no emergency vehicles? I needed to find someone to call for help before the fire spreads, putting anyone else in danger. As I reached the alleyway to the main street, the adrenaline was wearing off, and my legs shook, threatening to give out. I leaned up against the wall, gasping for air. I could only hear the sound of my blood rushing and my heart pounding wildly. Suddenly, a hand covered my face, and I felt a feeling that was all too familiar. No! I better not be getting chloroformed again! My body felt the rush through time and space before collapsing into reality again. I look up, already knowing who I would find when the hand was moved from my face. What's with the nasty look? I glance around, trying to figure out where exactly Double landed us. Oh, cause he can do that teleport thing. <clears throat> don't worry, I didn't phase you too far. Just far enough away that we don't have to worry about any... interruptions. Don't touch me! Get away from me! I back up, stumbling and catching myself over some garbage. When Binary Star finds you, he's going to- do what exactly? Bring me to justice? Double cackles. It's cold and humorless. Grow a brain, honey. You should be thanking me. You're lucky I got to you first, Raven God. Who knows what he would have done? Well, he would have exploded me into a bunch of stars, or he would have kidnapped me into his penthouse. I continue to catch my breath, glaring up at him. Binary Star would have saved me. He tilts his head, Double's eyes crinkle. Are you sure about that? You really can't be this ignorant, Espoir. You don't know me very well, sir. <laughs> I am very ignorant. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> he told you, didn't he, about his abilities, or rather, ability? I look at Double. My silence speaks volumes. Then think. Use your fluffing brain. Before you went to sleep, did you leave anything plugged in? Yeah, yeah, I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna say, I, I only realized it while editing the last video. How did this fire start? Obviously, Binary Star did it, but how? Who do we not see anymore? Blaze. Eh? Eh? When you woke up to your apartment already covered in flames, did you smell any gas? Any gasoline? My eyes widen at what Double is insinuating. Blew my mind when I realized that. How were you able to sleep through your apartment catching on fire, Raven Guard? There's... there's no way. It's the only way. Y you you must have done this. Double cackles loudly. <laughs> Do you hear yourself? Think, Raven Guard. Who bothered you at the cafe? No. Yes. Yes. Binary Star took out the trash. And and when Ray was on the phone, he's like, "Yeah, I did it. What you gonna do about it? Fire me? Mm. Because he moited Blaze." No, no, we don't need to do that for him. We already did that. And if I didn't come collect you, guess who would have been next? No, that doesn't make sense. Why would he want to kill me? Who knows what that psycho is thinking. I really shouldn't have saved you. But the thought of someone else, anyone else, torching you alive didn't really sit right with me. So let's go back to old times. New city, new us. Don't worry, Raven Guard. I may not be a hero, but I'll keep you reasonably safe and sound. Double laughs as if it's the funniest thing in the world. My face pales. Eh. True to Double's word, we started a new life in a new city. Although it was a new life, it felt reminiscent of old times. 
This time, Double wasn't keeping any secrets. I witnessed everything, for better or for worse. I would see Binary Star's face on the screen, on magazines, on big advertisements, peering down at me as if I were an ant. I could almost see the madness swimming behind the wide, iconic smile. I look over at Double. He cuts a piece of flesh off of a hero's arm. Ooh. The hero screams, peering at me with pleading eyes. Double looks back at me, smiling wide, blood-splattered face. Was trading one madness for another worth it? It was a question that swam in the depths of my chest, that crawled up my throat like bile every time Double smiled at me. I was too afraid to answer. Double approaches me, wiping the blood off his hands with a towel. He smiles. He tells me, Let's get out of here, Espoir. The others will take care of the rest. I glance at the screaming man, more flesh being extracted. I glance back at Double, foolishly asking, Is he going to be okay? A fake smile stretches across Double's face. His jaw tightens. I can tell he's upset. A paper-thin smile, Double asks, Why? Do you care what happens to him? To a hero? I grab Double's hand, responding, No, I don't. Let's go. Double smiles, leaning down. He places his lips on my forehead. I can feel the blood smear where he kisses. Arlutidebe. Le. Editor me, what does that mean? Ah. Our liturgical smearing of ashes. We are the same, yet so different. Double doesn't hide anything from me anymore. He expects the same in return. As we walk amongst the city streets, I don't dare look upon the oppressive stare of Binary Star. He glares down at me, accusations behind his wide smile. I refuse to look, even as the red eyes dissolve into the night. After all, in Double and I's world, there was only room for us, and only us. Uh, 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 Haley, I want to go back with you. Okay, and this should be the Ray ending. <laughs> Last time, the only option I had was, I hope you find what you're looking for, but Ray. Ray, I've done this whole playthrough. I'm madly in love with you. I've played this game for like six hours. Save me, Ray. I give Ray a bold look. Save me, Ray. You told me to call out to you for help. Now I am. I don't want Binary Star to save me. I don't want him. I want you. I'm asking you, Ray. I want to stay with you. I don't want oblivion. I don't want silence. I don't want a greater purpose. I want you. I want to be with you. Human or monster, it doesn't matter. I don't care. You will never trust me. I can't help but to laugh, even in these circumstances. Ray, after everything, do you really expect me to be able to trust you? You hardly have ever given me a reason to trust you. But I can tell that you care for me, and all I know is some part of me does love you, and I don't want to throw that away because of some uncertainty. I want to try and learn to trust you, the real you. Ray looks at me like he doesn't quite know what to say. I want to go on normal dates with you. I want to get in fights and cry, apologize, laugh, have awkward misunderstandings. I want to surmount differences together. <sighs> All this time, you've been what people wanted you to be. But the truth is, I don't want you to be anyone. I want to grow into something with you. Even if I'm not... The hero binary star that you want? I fell for Ray in the coffee shop, not the edited hero on the magazine. And I'm not ready to give that up yet. So please, give us a chance to figure this out together. Please, hold on a bit longer. Defend this planet a bit longer. Please, 
don't give up on this. On us. I entangle our fingers together. Ray is silent as he watches me. His shoulders slump into a tired posture. He gives a deep exhale of air. I promise I'll make you the best black coffee. Ray's eyes crinkle. That's an offer I can't turn down. This is a money-back guarantee, right? He squeezes my hand lightly. I crack a smile, even under these circumstances. Always. In an instant, Ray places a sweet kiss on my lips. He lifts me up easily in his arms. Ray! I gasp in shock. What? He looks down at me with a coy smirk. I'm really craving some exclusive Espoise black coffee right now, aren't you? His face is so close to mine, I can't help but to look away. He chuckles. <laughs> Wrap your arms around my neck and hold on tight. I do as I'm told, and in an instant, we're in the air, flying. The night sky is beautiful, but the cold air makes me shiver. Ray holds me a bit tighter, draping his iconic cape over my back. Ray is still an enigma to me. Some part of me thinks I'll never quite understand him. But for the first time, we have some semblance of understanding between us. And it makes me want to learn more about who Ray is. I want to discover the bad, the good, and the deep, dark shadows that are cast from his luminosity. I close my eyes, squeezing Ray tight, hoping, praying, for anyone, for a future that is kind. Ooh, that's good! I like that ending. <laughs> I kind of like the Haley one more, but I, I like the Ray ending. The Ray ending is absolutely lovely. Did I get all the, all the pictures? Yay! That was an adventure! I like that! I like that a lot! Ray is now nestled neatly into my little harem of husbands, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> but I gotta say, I had a lot of fun with this game. I had a lot of fun with these characters and this story and this art and just all this, all this. I like it. It's good. I like it. I like it a lot. And thank you for sticking around for it, too. I know that was a bit, a bit of a long one, but it was worth it. I think it was worth it. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Superman who? <laughs> well, I could gush about this game all day, I'm, I'm actually very tired, and I'm gonna go sit down and eat some food. But I'd love to know what you think in the comments, so you could put a comment down there in the comment place, and I will read it. But thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself, have a great night, and remember, there is always hope.